Other members of the committee had played a part in the final wording, but according to Richard Stockton, it was John Adams, to whom the country is most indebted for the great measure of independency. For it was Adams, he noted, who sustained the debates and by force of his reasoning alone demonstrated not only the justice but the expediency of the measure. When the spirits of some might have wavered, Adam's impassioned appeal had given them an extra measure of courage for the vote to adopt the Declaration of Independence. But the story does not end here. Both Jefferson, the author of the Declaration, and Adams, its leading advocate, were unable to attend the 1787 Constitutional Convention because they were representing America abroad. Both, however, served as President of the United States. Both headed up the first political parties in the New Republic. Jefferson becoming the leader of the Republicans. Did you hear that? Jefferson becoming the leader of the Republicans, the Republicans, the Republicans, and Adams assuming command of the Federalists. All of this Democratic parroting of the word Jeffersonian Democrat or the Jeffersonian Democratic Party is a lie like almost everything else that they parrot for they are chronic liars. Jefferson was the leader of the Republican Party. Adams was the leader of the Federalists. In retirement, Although these two men had not shared the same beliefs on some issues, they maintained a deep and abiding friendship through voluminous correspondence, which you should all obtain and read if you care one iota about your future. On the 50th anniversary of American Independence, July 4th, 1826, John Adams died. His final words were, and I quote, Thomas Jefferson remains, end quote. You see, he was not aware that before noon, on that very same day, Thomas Jefferson, too, had passed away. Exactly 50 years after that glorious day, when by their very courageous actions, the miracle that we know as America had begun. Many, many things has happened between then and now. But one of the greatest things that has happened is that the American people have forgotten the men who brought this country into being, the ideals upon which they based the great gifts that they handed down to you, their posterity, and the principles to which they held true, to which they were willing to give everything that they owned and held dear to bring into being. How is it that we are so eager to give these things away? You see, it takes an enlightened, committed people to understand the principles of our Constitution to maintain the status of liberty and freedom. And mark my words, all of you listening around the world, if America falls, so go you. The most effective means of preserving liberty is to understand it. You see, although all men are born free, slavery has been the general lot of the human race. Ignorant, they have been cheated. Asleep, they have been surprised. Divided, the yoke has been forced upon them. But what is the lesson? 
The people ought to be enlightened, to be awakened, to be united, that after establishing a government, they should watch over it. It is universally admitted that a well-instructed people alone can be permanently free. James Madison said that. And he didn't know anything about today, but he understood very well human nature. Thomas Jefferson said, We must not let our rulers load us with perpetual debt. We must make our election between economy and liberty our profusion and servitude. Sir William Blackstone said, Man must necessarily be subject to the laws of his Creator. This will of his Maker is called the law of nature. This law of nature is, of course, superior to any other. No human laws are of any validity if contrary to this, and such of them as are valid derive all their force from this original. America's Constitution is the means by which knowledgeable and free people, capable of self-government, if they are, can bind and control their elected representatives in government. In order to remain free, the founders said, the people themselves must clearly understand the ideas and principles upon which their constitutional government is based. Through such understanding, they will be able to prevent those in power from eroding their constitutional protections. See, our founders established schools and seminaries for the distinct purpose of instilling in youth the lessons of history and the ideas of liberty. And in their day, they were successful. Tocqueville an eminent French jurist traveled America and in his 1830s work entitled Democracy in America wrote every citizen is taught the doctrines and the evidences of his religion the history of his country and the leading features of its constitution it is extremely rare to find a man imperfectly acquainted with all these things and a person wholly ignorant of them is a sort of phenomenon. Today, ladies and gentlemen, a person who understands and knows these things is the rarity. While he was on the frontier, he noted that no sort of comparison can be drawn between the pioneer and the dwelling that shelters him. He wears the dress and speaks the language of the cities. He is acquainted with the past, curious about the future, and ready for argument about the present. I do not think that so much intellectual activity exists in the most enlightened and populous districts of France. And he continued. He said... It cannot be doubted that in the United States the instruction of the people powerfully contributes to the support of the Democratic Republic, and such must always be the case, where the instruction which enlightens the understanding is not separated from the moral education. We cannot say that today. Possessing a clear understanding of the failure of previous civilizations to achieve and sustain freedom for individuals, our forefathers discovered some timeless truths about human nature, and that was their forte. They knew and understood human nature probably better than anyone who has ever lived. The struggle for individual liberty, the human tendency toward abuse of power, and the means for curbing that tendency through constitutional self-government. Jefferson's bill for the more general diffusion of knowledge for Virginia declared, and I quote, Experience hath shown that even under the best forms of government, those entrusted with power have in time, and by slow operations, perverted it into tyranny. And it is believed that the most effectual means of preventing this would be 
to illuminate the minds of the people, to give them knowledge of those facts which history exhibiteth. History, by apprising them of the past, will enable them to judge of the future. It will qualify them as judges of the actions and designs of men. It will enable them to know ambition under every disguise it may assume, and knowing it, to defeat its views. End quote. See, education was not perceived by the founders to be a mere process for teaching basic skills. It was much, much more. Education included the very process by which the people of America would understand and be able to preserve their liberty and secure their creator-endowed rights. And this is not taught anymore. And that is why the state has seized control of the school, so that it will not, cannot be taught. And any teacher who begins to teach these things will not long be a teacher today. Understanding the nature and origin of their rights and the means of preserving them, the people would be capable of self-government, for they would recognize any threats to liberty and nip the shoots of arbitrary power in the bud, said John Adams. Little did he know the apathy, ignorance, and yes, stupidity of the modern America. If he did, he may not have risked everything. The basic idea of America's Constitution was a small federal government, strong local and state governments, and a well-armed people to make sure that it stayed that way. A militia made up of the whole of the people so that tyranny could never take root in America. And that's why those who would have a socialist, one-world totalitarian government are so afraid of the militia. And that's why they must demonize these good, patriotic Americans who, like our founding fathers, are willing to risk all. Including the ridicule of those who haven't the slightest idea of what it's all about. You see, the basic idea was to get government as close to the people as possible. The more remote it is from the people, the more dangerous it becomes. In the words of Thomas Jefferson, ladies and gentlemen, the true theory of our Constitution is surely the wisest and best. When all government shall be drawn to Washington as the center of all power. It will render powerless the checks provided of one government on another and will become as oppressive as the government from which we separated. What has destroyed the liberty and the rights of man in every government which has ever existed under the sun, the generalizing and concentrating all cares and powers into one body. The way to have good and safe government is not to trust it all to one, but to divide it among the many. For it is by dividing and subdividing these republics from the great national one down that all will be done for the best. James Madison stressed the necessity to reserve all possible authority in the states and the people, saying, and I quote, the powers delegated by the Constitution to the federal government are few and defined. Those which are to remain in the state governments are numerous and indefinite, and the rest shall remain with the people. Amendment 10. The powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively, are to the people. What in the world has happened? You see, the genius of America's Constitution was its separation of powers. America's founders had declared themselves free of a tyrannical government. They were determined that such tyranny would never be repeated in this land. Their new charter of government 
the Constitution very carefully defined the powers delegated to government, outlined them clearly, and forbade any more. Our founders were determined to bind down the administrators of the federal government with constitutional chains so that abuse of power in any of its branches would be prevented. You see, the revolutionary idea of separation of powers, although unpopular at first, became a means by which this was to be accomplished. John Adams, in a letter to Dr. Benjamin Rush, stated, quote, I called you to witness that I was the first member of Congress who ventured to come out in public as I did in January 1776 in my thoughts on government in favor of a government with three branches and an independent judiciary, end quote. By the time the Constitution was adopted, the idea was supported by all of the members of the Convention. James Madison, the father of the Constitution, devoted five Federalist Papers, numbers 47 through 51, to an explanation of how the executive, legislative, and judicial branches were to be wholly independent of each other, yet bound together through an intricate system of checks and balances. Madison believed that keeping the three branches separated was fundamental to the preservation of liberty, and he wrote, The accumulation of all powers, legislative, executive, and judiciary, in the same hands, whether of one, a few, or many, may justly be pronounced the very definition of tyranny. George Washington, in his farewell address, reminded Americans of the need to preserve the Founders' system. He spoke of the love of power and proneness to abuse it which predominates in the human heart, and warned of the necessity of reciprocal checks of political power by dividing and distributing it into different depositories and constituting each the guardian against invasions by the others. Of such checks and balances, through the separation of powers, be concluded, to preserve them must be as necessary as to institute them. Through a system of subversion of the Constitution for the United States of America. Beginning as early as the Civil War, taking its main form in 1913 with the, what we call the Federal Reserve Act, and then the total subversion by granting the war powers to the President on March the 9th, 1933, and then by the misinterpretation of Article 6 of the Constitution for the United States of, Amer of America. And this misinterpretation states that by signing and ratifying a treaty, it supersedes the supreme law of the land, which is the Constitution. Our forefathers made it clear that nothing could supersede the law of the land, the Constitution, but that treaties must be in alignment with it. But by all of this, the adoption of the United Nations Treaty and the passage of the United Nations Participation Act and many, many, many more the balance of power has been rendered asunder all of the powers of the government are in one hand. And William Clinton, that is how dare I say that we live in tyranny in the freest country in the world.
For while the rest of the world is bound by three chains, it makes no difference whether we are bound by one or two. We are still the freest country in the world, and we are still living under tyranny, and we are just a stone's throw from the third chain. That is how dare I, and I will continue to dare. And if need be, I will give my life for my country. I understand the difference now. I understand full well that I was a fool, thinking that I was serving my country when I was sent to Vietnam to further the interest of tyranny, and that now I am called a terrorist for standing up on the soil that my fathers and my forefathers and our founding fathers fought and died to protect as a patriot. Your lies, Bill Clinton won't watch. Jeffersonian Democrats, indeed. It is amazing that Americans have lost the ability to use their brains. Good. Tomorrow all the things were gone, work for all my life, and I had to start again, it's just my children and my wife, I thank my lucky star to be living here today, there's a flag still stands for freedom, and they can't take it. Coming up on the uh, top of the second hour now, and uh, then uh, we'll go into the last hour. Doyle is going to uh, go over all the uh, products that we have to offer, and uh, then we're going to open the phones. If you want to jot down the phone number, do it now, 520-333-4578. For those of you who were hearing a buzz during this last hour, it's not WBCQ, and it's not your radio. Is a piece of equipment here, so don't worry about it. Um, the uh, telephone number, once again, is 520-333-4578. That's also the number that you need to call sometime uh, um, tomorrow afternoon or, uh, let me see, what's tomorrow, Wednesday or Thursday afternoon in order to uh, get uh, the shipping charges for any of the uh, products that we offer 
that you may wish to purchase. Uh, some of them, we will tell you, are postpaid. So you don't need to get shipping charges for whatever we tell you is postpaid. Okay. And here's the address, uh, by the way, in case you want to order any of the things that Doyle is going to give you. You might want to jot that down right now. It's the hour of the time. That's the hour of the time. In care of 101.1 FM. That's 101.1 FM. Post Office Box 940. That's P.O. Box 940. Eager, spelled E-A-G-A-R, Arizona. That's Eager, spelled E-A-G-A-R, Arizona, 85925. Once again, the hour of the time, 101.1 FM, P.O. Box 940, Eager, Arizona, 85925. Well, folks, uh, I'm going to take a break. So, here's Doyle. Don't forget Doyle. At the top of the hour. Sure. All righty. Alrighty, this evening I just wanted to run over the products that we have here to offer. Uh, first off, I'd like to start with the shortwave antenna kit. Uh, this is a really nice kit we put together here. Oh, wait a minute, Doyle. We forgot. 101's still in the air. For those of you listening, 101.1 FM in the Round Valley, we're going to have to uh, take the transmitter off the air while we do our commercial. Uh, 101.1 FM is a nonprofit community service. Radio station. Go ahead. Alrighty. Anyway, this uh, antenna kit that we've put together, this is a very high quality kit. It comes with a 75 foot of pure copper and insulated wire. That's for your line antenna. You can either do a straight line or bend it either way you want. Do a V or inverted V dipole, which would be the best. It comes with 50 foot of insulated lead-in wire, two ceramic insulators for your lead-in, two end insulators for your straight line antenna, full directions, and in fact, on in the directions are instructions which include the formulations to tune this antenna to the exact frequency that you may desire. If you want to tune it to a certain band by trimming it, you can do that. Uh, you really tweak the antenna to get maximum performance. But just remember, if you do do that, you're going to cut out performance on some of the uh, higher meter bands, your 120 and whatnot, if you start trimming it. So just keep that in mind if you wish to do that. That's all explained in the complete directions. That is 24.95 postage paid. It is sent priority mail. 24.95 priority mail postage paid. And those will go out with about mm, two or three days time after we get your order, uh, not, not so we can hoard your money, it's so that we can deal with orders and logistics of it. The next thing I'd like to cover is the uh, mainstay food. This uh, mainstay line of uh, food rations is uh, very popular throughout the, uh, well, your, your teams that deal with a uh, search and rescue or people that have to stay out for long terms of time away from civilization, as we call it, or just the uh, on-off light switches and running water that people are used to. This is some really good stuff. It's got a five-year shelf life. It's uh, non-thirst provoking. It's uh, packaged in a very durable, waterproof, vacuum-sealed package that withstands temperature ranges from negative 40 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. No cholesterol, no tropical oils, and to give you an idea, the how well made this product is is it's, it's approved by the Defense Personnel Support Center, the U.S. Army, the U.S. Coast Guard approved, and almost all of your emergency and search and rescue teams across America have approved this for their own kits as well as the people that they go out and save. This is some really good stuff. We have the uh, 3,600 calorie bars it's referred to. A case of 10 of those packets. Each packet is 3,600 calories. That's quite a bit. You only need 1,200 for a full day of uh, moderate work. Heavy, heavy labor only requires 1,800 calories. So you can see how this is uh, 
quite a bit of calorie intake. One case of 10 packets is 43.50. Call for information about the postage, and we will tell you how it will, the cost of the UPS shipping. It is 43.50 for a case of 10 of these packets. Okay, five-year shelf life. The next product is the Mainstay Water. This is um, manufactured, of course, by the same people. Uh, many of the same statistics, uh, the metallized foil type vacuum seal packaging. Uh, each packet is 4.225 ounces, um, roughly equal to the soft drinks you see, those juice drinks in a store for children or whoever. Uh, this water is uh, purified, sterilized, and then sealed in the airtight pouches to prevent bacteria growth. Uh, so nice advantage of this is unlike bottled water, which must be stored in dark, cool places. I forgot something, Alan. Sorry. This is WBCQ, Monticello, Maine, USA. Anyway, unlike bottled water, which must be uh, stored generally in dark, cool places to, uh, well, to in basically inhibit bacterial growth and um, the algae stale taste that water gets when it's packaged like that. This, you don't have to worry about that stuff. Also, with the average bottled water, only lasts about six months shelf life uh, because of two reasons, propagation of germs, number one. Number two, the packaging. Uh, most of your plastics by EPA mandate to these manufacturers and they follow it is one year down to six months life before it decomposes or begins decomposing. It's supposedly to help cut down on landfill. So you can see why those packages break down, and that's why they rotate products so quick. This has a five-year shelf life. Much easier to transport than a five-gallon jug of water, too. The price of this water is 60 packets of it in a case for $19.95. I repeat, 60 packets in a case for $19.95. The next thing is a really good book we found. It's called the Wallace Guidebook. This is a really nice book. It's written by a founder of one of the largest uh, survival institutes as far as uh, preparedness. This man instructs PTA groups, schools, counties, cities, states, emergency teams. This man is uh, really an expert in this field. And uh, this is a book that he wrote himself. Uh, it, includes, it includes literally hundreds of innovative survival techniques uh, covering anything from simple scratches to childbirth. Uh, along with indoor-outdoor scenarios and tips you may need. This is an excellent book to have. It is $5.49, $5.49 for the Wallace Guidebook. It's an excellent deal. This book, you will guarantee to learn something. I don't care if you're a nurse or a doctor, you will learn more. Okay, the next thing i like to cover is the first aid and travel kit. This kit is uh, oriented more towards people that are out, on the, out and about, away from home. Okay? This includes hikers, hunters, uh, a lot of bikers. Um, your bike races and stuff carry these in their kits and their little fanny bags. Um, also, a lot of people that uh, travel, prof professionals in their line that, of work causes them to travel a lot, actually carry these with them, especially if they're going all way far away from home or out of the country. It's a really handy kit to have. It includes a lot of stuff. you got a soft carrying case, pads all the items, protects them. Uh, instant cold pack, adhesive bandages, alcohol wipes, antiseptic wipes, the sterilized water packet, so if you need it to wash a wound or to drink, antibiotic ointment, tissue packs, gauze pads, disposable gloves. It's a really nice kit. This kit is only $7.95. <clears throat> this is a really nice thing to have or to give as a gift for people who you know travel a lot or hikers or hunters, anybody along that line. The next kit is the uh, Traveler. This is a kit that is comprised and based on enough necessities to keep a person going through uh, good and bad times both for three days, one person for three days. Uh, this kit here, it's got a, um, a really nice zip-up soft case that it stores in with a shoulder carrying strap, hand strap type deal. It comes with a uh, duct tape, uh, emergency blanket, the uh, Wallace guidebook is included in this kit. A flashlight with batteries, food rations, tissue packs, utility bags, 
water rations, adhesive bandages, tape, alcohol wipes, aspirin, first aid cream, towelettes, razor blades. You can see there's over, there's over 50 items in this kit. This is an excellent kit to put in the trunk of a car. You don't have to worry about it because the uh, lowest shelf life item in here is the food and water, and that's five years. So you can see you don't need to check it all the time to see if it's still okay or popped open. Excellent kit. Throw in your truck, your car. Throw in a closet just to have, or if you travel around quite a bit. The Traveler kit is $37.95. I repeat, it's called the Traveler, and it's $37.95. Next item is the Art 3, it's called, as in Noah's Ark 3, the Art 3. This is a uh, basic kit, quite often given as gifts for uh, corporations, uh, thank you awards, uh, ads, uh, uh, sales gifts for people uh, to schools. A lot of schools give these, especially like uh, out in California. I've seen it firsthand, they give these to uh, students um, because of... If you live in the right area, you may have fires and earthquakes and riots and whatever else quite often. So this is a really neat kit. Uh, it's one person, three days. does not include uh, items like the Traveler has, more oriented towards being out on the roadways. But it includes uh, uh, food, blanket, water. It's a really nice kit. Packaged in a real durable box, shrink-wrapped, essentially waterproof. It's really amazing. You leave these out in the rain. I've seen it. Someone left one accidentally out in the rain. That someone was me, and it was still pretty good. There was nothing damaged inside. My box is a little warped. This Arc 3 is $13.37. It's a really nice, it's a really nice package. $13.37 for the Arc 3. And the last item for tonight is called the Super Arc. Essentially, this is a combination of pieces from the Traveler kit and the ARC all combined on one box set with instructions. It has first aid supplies, food ration, matches, warmth, as far as blanket, candle, you've got chemical light sticks for light, drinking water, a whole lot of stuff in this kit. This is an excellent kit. Uh, it's an upgrade from the ARC 3. This is the Super ARC. It is 1995. I repeat, this is the Super ARC. I know the two names are really close, but you can tell by the difference in price why there's a lot more items. 1995 for the Super Arc. It's one person for three days. It's got over 30 items in it. Okay, if you have any questions about shipping on these items, remember the shortwave antenna kit. It's postage paid, 24.95, sent priority mail. All other items, please call so we can work out the lowest possible shipping cost with you to your exact area. And you will call 520-333-4578 some, during decent hours of the day, please. And uh, to write to order any of these items, it is Hour of the Time, care of 101.1 FM, P.O. Box 940, Eager, E-A-G-A-R, Arizona, 85925. Oh, boy. You did a good job there. That was great. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's uh, get uh, 101 back on the air. If you want to get that down, down there. Okay, folks. Uh, whew, we got about uh, 50 more minutes left in the broadcast, about five more minutes before we have to uh, turn the tape over for the last time. And uh, we're going to open the phones right now. The number is 520-333-4578 if you'd like to call in and talk about anything. I don't care what it is. Uh, we're going to try from time to time to let you be a part of the broadcast and, uh, well, you know, say what you want to say or ask what you want to ask or do what you want to do or uh, whatever. Now, I'm not uh, certain how this is. Uh, oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Good evening, you're on the air. Hi, Bill. Rick Martin, how are you? Hi, Rick. How are you? Sitting here with Barbara. Oh, hi, Barbara. She's right here. Just uh, really glad you're back up. Uh, your signal's great. You sound great, and uh, we're just uh, really, really pleased to hear you again. Well, thank you, Rick. How's Barbara doing, by the way? She's doing fine. We've had, uh, had a few little surgical things, but uh, overall, things are doing pretty well, and uh, we're hanging in there. Barbara, I want you to know there's been a lot of prayers said here for you. Hey, we really appreciate all those prayers. A lot of prayers said here for you, too, and for your family. <laughs> well, thank you. I want to bring you up to date on the SEAL and uh, the Stowe City SEAL adventure here shortly, and then I'll, I'll get out of the way for others. Okay.
Okay. We're on our third federal judge, Bill. Oh, really? That's interesting. Yeah, this thing has been moved, uh, transferred to, we're into the third judge now, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's quite an adventure. We've really, really poked at some, uh, some pretty soft areas uh, in, in stirring this up, and uh, I'll tell you, we're just keeping the heat on, and uh, we had a decision uh, at the Ohio level, at the uh, uh, court there, that uh, allowed that with God all things are possible to stand, and uh, that's of course been appealed immediately by the ACLU, so <laughs> we're, we're still warring up here, but uh, I'll tell you, we just keep praying and, uh, and keep pushing. Well, that's wonderful. You know the origins of the ACLU, don't you? I believe it's uh, Walter Baldwin and originally a communist organization. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think if we can, uh, we can wake up some, uh, some more people out there, I think that's, that's what it's all about. But yeah, I'll tell you, your signal is so strong. We're just so pleased that, uh, that you're back out there and, uh, and spreading, the, spreading the good word. Well, thank you, sir. So we'll get out of the way here and uh, let somebody else get in. But, uh, hey, it's just really good to hear you, and, and we keep you in, the, in our prayers all the time. Well, thank you, Rick. We appreciate that. Okay, take care now. You too. All right. Tell your family hello. I will. Bye-bye. They're, they're listening. They <laughs> heard you. <laughs> Thank you for calling. Uh, the number is 520-333-4578 if you'd like to call. Um, now is the time to do it. And we've just got two minutes till tape turnover time and uh, about 47 minutes until the end of the broadcast. And, of course, we cut it off a little bit before the end. Good evening. You're on the air. Who, who am I talking to? Uh, Randy and Torrance. Hi, Randy. No, we didn't. Uh, we didn't disappear, and we've never been off the air, not ever. Right. We've been always been on the air somewhere. Yeah, well, if you weren't on, I couldn't. Didn't know where you were in short wave until tonight on WCQ. WBCQ. WBCQ. Yeah, that's Worldwide Bill Cooper Forum. <laughs> <laughs> I can see Alan jumping up out of his chair over that one. <laughs> I think it was nice of him to put uh, Bill Cooper in the middle of WBCQ. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear back on that because when I found out what the station was that uh, the local uh, public radio station has a program called The Show, and uh, they were on Sunday morning. And they were you know, you need really need to talk a lot louder. Well, good. I'm glad you uh, found us yeah. again. Yeah, well, it's been several years. Yeah, but anyway, uh, what I want to talk about is, uh, have you been, um, do you ever have a Sherman Skull Nuts hotline in Chicago? <laughs> Are you kidding? This is the guy who said Donald Duck, Mickey Mouse, and Goofy uh, went into the White House, murdered Vince Foster, and carried him out and dumped him in the park. Are, are you nuts? Um, well, I was <laughs> Well, I, I think that's on purpose. I, he, I think he intentionally discredits himself to discredit everybody. Well, and he, and every once in a while, he does something really good, but he mixes it all up with all this other Looney Tunes stuff. Uh, how are you supposed to know? That's, that's true. Uh, the reason, uh, I was trying to get to the bottom of one of his uh, searches was that uh, Rockefeller wanted to be vice president after uh, Clinton and everything. Uh, you got to talk louder, really. You, we're, you, if, if you don't talk you know, loud into that phone, nobody's going to hear you. I see. Well, anyway, I'll let some other callers come on. Bye-bye. Okay. Thanks for calling. You know, when I tell you that, folks, I'm not trying to uh, insult you or make you mad or anything like that. It's just you, when you call in to this show, uh, you, you've got to keep your level up so that the listening audience can hear you. See, I can hear you uh, really well on my earphones if you're, uh, you know, a few octaves below uh, me or Doyle. But uh, the listening audience is going to have a hard time hearing you. So please put the phone right in front of your mouth and um, talk as, you know, talk forcefully so that you come through really good. We don't have all the fancy equipment that a lot of radio stations have. What you're talking through when you get through to us is a speaker phone mm-hmm. in front of the microphone. <laughs> okay, it works. So that, and it works really well. Mm-hmm. And, it's, you know, we don't have to pay $2,000 for one of those phone thingy-me-jigs or whatever you call it. 
Seven eight is the number, and it's time to do the. Yeah, I'm going to turn this tape over right now. You'll have one. The tape has been turned over, and uh, we're back on line. 520-333-4578 is the number. By the way, folks, if you want to know a good book to get on a lot of the subjects that we were covering tonight, here's one right here. I don't know where you, you can find it. I really don't. We're, what? What? We're working on that already. Oh, we're working on it? Okay, yeah. well, maybe we'll be able to. I didn't know that. I had no yeah, idea. I, I but it's called A Factual Guide to the Constitution for the United States of America. And Doyle says he's working on, on getting it so we can offer it uh, to our listeners. It's a fantastic book. i got to tell you. You need it. Good evening. You're on the air. Oh, hi, Mr. Cooper. This is Vince in Chicago. Hi, Vince. Uh, I've heard a lot about you uh, in the past year or so, just listening around on the radio and the shortwave and whatnot. And... Uh, uh, you're a pretty interesting guy, and uh, I just wanted to let you know that uh, a while back I was on the Art Bell program, uh -huh. uh, and I asked Art Bell if he would have you on as a guest. Oh, that was you. We he heard it. We, uh, we were listening that night. Yeah, yeah and it caused quite a ruckus, and I guess he won't have you on the air and whatnot. Uh -huh. and I, I was just wondering what you think about that. How, how come he doesn't, you know, he has everybody as a guest on his program, but he won't have you. Well, because we pegged him for the bullshit artist that he really is. That's oh, right. Yeah. I was wondering what you thought about our bill. If you might have any feelings you might want to share with the... Uh... Well, we put it all on our webpage. If you, if you go to the webpage, and especially if you've been listening to this broadcast and you've heard our expose of the mystery schools and their subversion of the Constitution in this country... No, you know what, Mr. Cooper? Last night was the first time I've ever heard you. Oh, wow. Well, you so got I'm, I'm a new listener, and I'm uh, keenly interested in what you have to say. Excellent. Well, we're keenly interested in new listeners. Yeah. <laughs> listening. Okay, thank you. And by the way, if any of you want to go to our website and check out the Art BS Bell page, uh, our website is harvest-trust.org. That's harvest-trust.org. You don't need www. All you need is http colon forward slash forward slash harvest-trust.org. Good evening. You're on the air. Hey, Bill. This is Jim Taylor over in Kentucky. Hi, Jim. How are you? Fine. You doing okay? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I'm glad to hear you back on the air. I mean, you're coming in last clear tonight. Well, that's great. Well, thank you. Thank uh, Alan Weiner and all the good people who uh, who built and financed and run WBCQ. Well, yeah, I kind of like your format. Uh, you're giving us what uh, we need, uh, the basic documents that people have forgotten. Well, I hope I am, but don't trust me. You know, you got to go and find all these things, and I'm you got to. So uh, you're on the right track. Good. Uh, I had a question on this. I'm not being uh, nitpicky, but you know, uh, uh, originally we had a government set up as three separate departments. Not anymore. They're all in the executive branch. All of them. And uh, yeah, branches that would indicate something other than uh, departments. Yeah. Tricky wording. Uh, you know, Patrick Henry and I think James Mason and those guys. They Oh, yeah. They were, they were against uh, the Constitution, the anti-federalists. Yes. Yeah. Some of the, uh, you know, like uh, the Bill of Rights was put in there because of Patrick Henry's persistence. Well, what they, what they understood was that any, any government can be subverted if the people drop their vigilance and become ignorant and allow it to happen. And that's exactly what has happened in this country. Is this sort of an open forum? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, we meant to talk about yeah, that, and I, I was going to do it at the beginning of the broadcast. I'm glad you brought it up because I forgot all about it. Thank you for calling. Uh, yeah, apparently uh, Bogreitz was found uh, wounded, and uh, the only thing that we could get from the Sheriff's Department was that uh, uh, it was a self-inflicted wound, and uh, the hospital uh, tells us that uh, he's in stable condition, but that's all anybody will tell anybody. Now, we know that uh, 
He's been having some marital problems and some legal problems and, and who knows what other problems because I don't know what goes on in his private, private personal life. And uh, he's the only one who knows that. Uh, but I know his wife left him and has filed for divorce and he was pretty despondent over that. And in fact, uh, um, I guess, had, uh, had uh, applied for uh, to be admitted into a a mental care facility. Now, I'm not, I'm not telling you that he tried to commit suicide because I don't know that. He may have had an accident. Uh, all I know is if I think if Bo Grice wanted to kill himself, he would have done it. So I think, I mean, this is just my guess, is that it may be an accident. Good evening. You're on the air. Good evening, Mr. Cooper. Uh, my name is Art Brogan, calling from uh, Litchfield County, Connecticut. Hi, Art. How are you? Fine, thank you, sir. Very nice to have you back on the air again. A sickle thing. Oh, good. It's oh. such a thing as turning pink. You know. yeah. uh, the only problem I'm having is I, I talked to 20 other of my friends in the area who are all now wanting, you know, want to listen to your show all the time. And we're having the same problem the last two nights. From your first hour, which is uh, comes in crystal clear, and then as soon as 10 o'clock comes on the button, bingo. It's almost like in the old days when they used to jam you all the time. Well, it could be propagation. Or you might have somebody locally trying to jam us. What you need... That I wouldn't doubt. Well, what you need is, is to get the antenna we're offering. If you put that up according to directions, even if they try to jam you, you're still going to get this station. Ah, it's just that... I'm that tomorrow and show my friends because I told them that's the only way around it. Yeah, it is. And and Connecticut's a funny place. You've been jammed before. Oh, yeah. Over and over and over. Yeah, well, you know how to stop if it's local jamming. You get uh, several of your ham buddies who have uh, RDF, radio direction yeah, finders. Yeah, you're going to triangulate the thing. Yeah, you triangulate it. You knock on the guy's door oh, and, yeah. uh, and uh, you know, let, let him know what's what, and, and you, it won't happen anymore. Yeah, because they don't want to hear it from the FCC or anybody else who doesn't want to hear Yeah, well, I guarantee you, if I knocked on his door, he wouldn't want to hear it from me either. Or, <laughs> I don't want to hear it. How's everything going otherwise? Well, real well. And the children are fine, I guess. Children are wonderful. I, I guess. I heard them on the air last night. I had a little tear in my eye. Well, they were on the air tonight too. Yes, I heard them earlier. In fact, we may bring them in here before the broadcast's over and let them get on the air again. They love it. I, you know. My wife's been kind of boy. The little one's all grown up now. Well, she's three years old. She's not oh, quite grown up. And we had a hell of a time getting her to eat her beans tonight. You know? <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> and the thing I love is that at three years old, when I hear them, your child, and your, your first child, when she was three, I said, what a difference between their speech pattern at three years old and what I hear around town. Well, that's because we teach them. Our children will never see the inside of a public school in their life. And never. Neither of my grandchildren. My daughter, my oldest daughter, uh, Dorothy Pooh, yes. who you all know as Pooh, yes. um, reads better right now than most adults who have attended college. I would say so. Mm -hmm. Most adults I know that are just getting out of college, so-called adults, can't read the diploma. It <laughs> <laughs> doesn't does surprise, does does surprise me because most of them that go to college and get their diploma, uh, you know, haven't really stepped foot on the campus. They, they go, right. They have somebody sit in the class for them, and they pay for the papers, and, yep. you know, and of course not everybody does that. Not even most people do that. I'm just, you know, it's, we're, we're bantering here, and, yeah. and but uh, some people do. Mm -hmm. Some do, yes. Anyways, I'm going to order the antenna, and then we'll, I'll hook it up. We'll see how it goes. We'll see if I can find it. And if, if, uh, if that works, fine by me. I'm a happy camper then. Okay. I thank you for your time. Yeah. Uh, one, one of the things, sir, is... Um, sir. Uh, listening to the frequency late at night on uh -huh. the right out. Uh, other people in your area yep. have mentioned the same thing. A lot of it is this propagation. Uh, I, I would think. still triangulate, you know, with the ham radio operators. I have four check. friends that are in different parts of the area. Yeah. Like four corners. Yeah, uh huh. They're going to, over the next few nights, see if they can figure out where it's coming from. Yeah, so it's just the time of night back there right now. So, on, but we can do it, you know. mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you for your time, Bill. Good thank luck to you now. Thank you for calling. Bye-bye. 520-333-4578 is the number. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Bill. Jack Francis from Chicago. How you doing? Hi, Jack. Doing fine. Um, I just want to let you know, right now I'm up in Appleton, Wisconsin, and your signal's coming in clear as a bell. Well, that's great. And uh, I want to compliment you on your job on the, uh, the website. It's been a while since I've seen you. It was uh, summer of 97. 
You know, you can actually spend weeks on our website and, and never see and go to all the links and, uh, and uh, study and read everything. Well, I'll tell you, I spent a lot of time tracing it down and going from link to link, and I'll tell you, I've never seen so much information available at one source point, you know. Oh, no, you won't. And, you know, we're getting over 600,000 hits a month now. I believe it, because sometimes it's real hard to get a response. <laughs> Oh, yes, we are. And even in, in many foreign countries. Uh, we've heard from a lot of foreign countries, and uh, they're getting us loud and clear. Yeah, uh, I've got a, a little uh, grounded radio that uh, rarely could pick you up when you were on WWCR. Well, you just blasting in up here, and uh, if I can get you on this, they can get you everywhere. <laughs> well, you know, during the times that we're on, nobody's listening to WWCR or any, any other radio station for that matter. They're all listening to the hour of the time, just like they used to. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you, uh, keep up the good work, and I, and I see that you're really moving along. And uh, it was good to hear Rick Martin on there, too. Uh, yeah, you, you, Rick's hard to get a hold of if you've ever tried to get a hold of him. So. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but uh, hey, maybe I'll give him an email sometimes when I get his address. Okay. Well, good luck to you, Dawn. I'll be listening. Thanks for calling. Thanks. Yeah, Rick's giving hell over that uh, seal. <laughs> I love it. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight, and the line is now open. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, this is Wells. I'm in New Jersey, uh, a little bit west of the Statue of Liberty. Oh. And uh, the signal was really strong in the beginning, and uh, around about ten thirty. Ever since WBCQ has been on the air, in fact, not just your program. But uh huh. That's just. I No, you, you know, really propagation, but there's no interference, which is also nice. So no matter how weak it gets, you can still pick stuff out. Yeah, well, let, let me tell you what's really happening. See, the, the transmitter's in Maine. Yeah, we're too close. You're too close, and it's skipping right over you. That's but if you, if, you, if you get this antenna kit, or, or any long wire kit, you don't have to get ours. We do, we're just making this available for people who, who want it. Um, get a long wire antenna kit, and uh, either put it out as a long wire, or put it out uh, around the eaves, either inside or outside your house with the insulators. Or you can do it as a dipole um, anywhere. Yeah, that's uh, good. You'll, you'll get it. Different long wires. Uh, out here, it's uh, just a matter of skipping over. But maybe conditions will change as we uh, no, get into if, different seasons of the year. So. If you get a good antenna, even though it's you're close and it's skipping, you'll get the transmission because it's a very powerful station. It certainly is. Good night. Good night. And, uh, you know, when I tell you get a long wire antenna, you don't have to purchase ours, folks. You can make your own if you want to. Uh, we've just done this for people who don't know how or don't want to or, or would like to have the benefit of instructions and a kit and everything all there ready for you. Uh, we did this. And it's the exact same one, by the way, that uh, it's, it's the same thing that other people offer for anywhere from uh, $30 on up to 46 In fact, Ramsey's is $46 for the same thing. Mm -hmm. Good evening, you're on the air. Hello? Uh, this, this is Robert in Colorado. Hi, Robert, how are you? I've been following you for years, ever since you were in Denver many years ago. I better not turn around real quick then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll do all right. <laughs> uh, first say that I, I'm glad you're back. Well, thank you. Second thing, I didn't ever get, I never was, it wasn't clear here when you gave your address a box 10 something. Uh, you mean the, for the hour of the time? It's uh, hour of the time. I got all that. I just don't have that. Okay. Well, 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 wait a minute. I'm going to give it to you. Right. The hour of the time in care of 101.1 FM. FM? Yes, FM, as in FM radio. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay, I had that, but it didn't seem right. right. Okay. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> P.O. Box 940. Got all the rest. Okay, good. 85925. You got it. Well, we will, as long as the listeners support the program. The airtime is expensive, and three hours is something that uh, is going to be hard to uh, to pay for. So, well, if, if, I appreciate your, 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 the kind of things that you get into. I'm a retired school teacher. 
I wouldn't send my kids to school either. Well, good for you. <laughs> and thank you, thank you for being uh, able to admit that you're a school teacher and, and say that in the same breath. Oh, <laughs> that's easy to say for me. Well, good. Uh, thanks a lot. I, I said good. It's not good. I wish it were. I wish it were just the opposite of what it is. Well, I understand very clearly. Thank you for calling. Thank you. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight is the number. That's five two zero three 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 four five seven eight, and the line is no longer open. Good evening. You're on the air. I need you to put your mouth in front of that phone and talk a lot louder. Yeah, also, I need to get out the presence of that radio. Hey, buddy, uh, I joined your web ring, you know, the Let Freedom Ring web ring. Uh-huh. I talked to you one time on Alan Hamilton's show years ago, I'd say it was back in 92. Yeah, you need to talk a lot louder. I'm, I can barely hear you. I know the audience can probably not even hear you. All right, I'm going to pick up a hardline phone. Yeah, please don't call on those Rome phones. It doesn't ever work. That's a good Motorola. Nobody's ever, ever noticed it was portable. Or now, now we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, great. Glad that made a difference. Yeah, it made a big difference. Hey, look, um, Bill, I know a lot of people are congratulating you for being on. A friend of mine who's called you quite a bit here from Columbus, Georgia, he told me about it today. Uh-huh. Just got done searching through the, uh, um, the frequencies and found you. Well, good. So you're coming in five by five here. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah, we are in most places. It's just little pockets where people have difficulties, and I don't... Uh, one of the reasons is... The people who have the worst trouble are the closest to the shortwave station. Shortwave has a peculiarity to it uh, in that, you know, in most stations, the closer you are to the station, the better you can receive it. With shortwave, it's just the opposite. The closer you are to the station, the more difficult it is to receive it. Right, I understand, because it has a signal bounce. And it, uh, yeah, it bounces off the ionosphere, and it'll just go right over you. Yeah, and a lot of people are in the bounce area, and they miss it. Right. Hey, look, I uh, want to talk to you a little bit about Art Bell. Sure. Oh, yeah. Have you visited our page on the website? Well, uh, I'm, a link, I'm a member of the Let Freedom Ring. Howard, my dad, died recently, and uh, I've been really swamped with a lot of things. I have to do his work, too, now. Uh-huh. But um, I need to get back to working on my page and, you know, get up. Because I was able to get it. You know, there's only like 39 or 40 sites in the Let Freedom Ring web ring. Uh-huh. And I got in with no problem, but I haven't been able to work on my page since then. And, you know, we have a lot of life interests and in many different things. And um, I've... I've given out your book, and it's on loan quite a bit. You know, I've got two of them, and they're both on loan. Well, you're lucky you get them back. Most people loan out my book. They never see it again. Believe it or not, the Books A Million, which is a very large um, bookstore here in Columbus, Georgia, they carry your book right there on the shelf. You know, anybody can walk in and get it. It's yeah. prominently placed. Well, it's carried all over the country. It's the, it's the number one best-selling book. Uh, without any advertising or any uh, mention by any of the establishment press, uh, or anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to show it to people. You know, there's a lot of cool things in it. When I woke up, uh, I have to say, it was you on the Alan Hanneman show, right about, um, let's see, Oklahoma City bombing, April. It must have been the beginning of May of 95. I heard you, and uh, so much happened right at that time uh -huh. that really uh, got well, that me started, got me awake. I befriended Stan Deo, and I know he helped you some on his book. And, you know, I just, been, I had a lot of... Uh, good head starts on, you know, waking me up and it happened real quick. And, and you know, if you were predicting the Oklahoma City, the Atlanta Centennial Park bombing, I predicted the night, the time frame and everything. And, and the LCI came to see me and the Lord sent me two Christian LCI men. Well, good they for told you. me the next thing on the calendar of God was, uh, you know, that basically, let me just suffice it to say that they were both two Christians and uh, I was really impressed. You know, when you do the things the Lord's way, he'll take care of you. Yes. I want to talk to you about Art Bell. I need this first book. I sent it in by fact, The Art of Talk. Uh -huh. um, he seems to be uh, a puppet, and I know he doesn't understand what he's doing, Bill. But he's 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 just getting rich off the deal. Oh, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that he doesn't understand what he's doing. He understands exactly what he's doing. He's a player, don't you? Oh yes, absolutely. He's a member of the mysteries. He's uh, he's uh, a, a Marxist socialist. If you read his book, The Quickening, it it is the most uh, unashamed. Um, uh, promotion of one world totalitarian socialist government that I have ever seen. Well, that's strong words, Bill. Oh, yes. All that's out there uh, with, with the work of so many people that's on his, on his um, show. You know, it seems like you go down the New Age best-selling book list. No, he's going, out, he's going down the baffle you with bullshit list. 
That's what he does every night. He puts on Looney Tune, wackos, escape mental patients, crazies, uh, all of this kind of stuff. You sit there, listen to him play in tapes of, of voices from hell uh, through a well dug in Siberia, which, which uh, never happened. Um, and they're not voices from hell. He plays this thing over and over again. One night he was sitting there talking to train travelers uh, from the year 2012, and, and uh, he's got people chasing rainbows, Bigfoots, extraterrestrials, aliens, uh, cities on Mars, and, and uh, uh, you know, while they're engaged in all of this baffle me with, uh, with incredulous crap stuff, uh, they are no threat to the destruction of this country. And, uh, and the bringing about of the New World Order. Well, just about everybody that he has on his show is, is, is the who's who list of the occult. Sean David Morton is one of the biggest frauds I've ever known in my life. He first called me back in uh, 1989 on the telephone when I lived in Camp Verde. Yeah. And he told me that he was the son of Satan. <laughs> yeah. hey, thanks for telling me that. Yeah, that's what I'm he told me. That's very important because um, me and uh, the Sandero have a, a big joke about calling him Sean David <laughs> oh, he's the son of the dead. He's a total fraud. That comes right in handy. Thanks, Bill. Yeah. Well, you're welcome. Just wanted to touch base with you on that, and I'll, get, I'll check your site in just a few minutes. And, okay. Uh, I'll send you an email and let you know what I think, because I, I've been talking to Art for going on uh, since 1995 quite a bit, hot and heavy, and um, I've got him, I've made him uh, confess that the book was written by God, the Bible, I mean. He confessed it one night on his show. I said, wouldn't it be great, Art, if, if the creator had left us with the owner's manual for life here on this, this planet. And it was the night he had Lam Lam Fear on, that guy that found, I mean, um, not that guy, but that Rio D'Angelo, the last surviving member of the Heaven's Gate, the dude that went up there and found those people, uh-huh, uh-huh. Rancho of Santa Fe. Yeah, I know who. So I said, wouldn't it be great if the Creator had left us a uh, handbook for life here on this earth? And he said he did, sir. It's called the Bible. You know, so every now and then he says some really profound things. Yeah, but the two nights later, he, he, he ridicules the Bible and, and uh, anybody who holds any religious views whatsoever. We believe that anybody uh, should have the freedom to worship uh, whatever altar that they wish or no altar if they wish. You know, that's what this country is all about. And in a way, that, that's not God's way. He wishes that everyone would do it his way, and he says, learn not the way of the heathen. And in this country, we give the heathen equal rights, and you know that's the truth, and and that's the shame of it, Bill. We empower the heathen. Well, let me let me put it away that you might be able to understand it a little better. If, in fact, man does not have free will, and if we are not here to make our own free will choice, no matter who likes it or who doesn't like it, then religion is nothing but a joke. Do you understand that? It depends on what kind of God you're dealing with. We're, we, of course, know God to be uh, merciful. No, 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 no. You, you are expressing your viewpoint. Don't say we. Yeah, but we know it's the truth, though, Bill. No, no. We, we don't know that. You may know that. You know it, too. I know what my religious beliefs are, but I don't put my religious beliefs on anybody else. It's up to them to make their own choice, and they have to answer to God if God exists, and they don't have to answer if anybody if there isn't any God. I don't claim it. I am. Okay, I'm right. I see you say in your book, right? You know, right away, Jesus is your savior. Yes. Would you ever try to lead someone to Christ, say a black person, just out of curiosity? No, not unless they came to me and asked me for me to tell them what my religion is or explain it to them. I would never force myself or my religion on anyone. Jesus didn't do it. Jesus stood on the side of the road and preached to those who stopped to listen and those who would walk by. He let them go. He didn't follow them. He didn't harangue them. He didn't bug them. He didn't call them names. He didn't tell them they were going to hell or anything else. He well, spoke to those who stopped to listen. And that's what I did. Okay. Well, I appreciate your time and I appreciate all you've done. And it's an honor and a pleasure to speak with you, sir. And I want you to keep up the good work and may the Lord keep you and your family safe. Well, thank you. Thank you. And I appreciate, okay. appreciate your call. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. 520. Yes, dear. <laughs> can, you, can you wait for uh, um, 20 more minutes until we finish with the broadcast? And then I'll get you guys a piece of candy. You want to stay here with us? She's shaking her head no. <laughs> Good evening. You're on the air. Hello. 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 Yes. Yeah, this is the first time I've heard you since you dropped off WWCR. Uh, actually, I 
Broadway caught you on 99.55 uh, uh, through the Cuban jamming down there a couple times. Uh-huh. And um, I just wanted to thank you for everything you did. Uh, we got a lot of a lot of organization going up here in uh, Columbus, Pennsylvania. Good. And, uh, yeah, for a while I was uh, I was educating Castro. <laughs> Are you kidding? He's a screaming communist, and I'm I'm everything against that. I know, but I mean, he's he's against the same people that are in there, you know, trying to trying to uh, get rid of them. Same way you are, in a, in a sense. I'm huh? not saying the same way, but uh, yeah, definitely there's a difference. But it's absolutely a difference, <laughs> a big difference. It seems that no, I'm, I'm saying it seems that he would let you continue your station, and uh, instead of jamming it, you know what I mean. Well, I, I don't understand that because my goal is to restore constitutional constitutional Republican government, which is a big threat to Castro and his Cuban communist thing. Well, it seems like uh, there's some people in, in, in our government that are opposed to him also that he's trying to jam out. Well, sure, but they're also opposed to us. <laughs> yeah. They're opposed to freedom. I know, I know. It's really crazy. We're caught between the, the hammer and anvil here. Yeah, that's the truth. Yeah, you know, see, if we, when you're caught between the hammer and the anvil, you know what our job is to become? A huge block of hard rubber. And when that hammer comes down and hits that hard rubber, it'll bounce halfway around the world. <laughs> Hopefully. And, uh, I mean, there's enough people out there now that are aware of what's going on. And, yeah. And, uh, well, try that sometime. Take a big piece of hard rubber, I mean, real hard rubber, and put it on an anvil. Hold a hammer with both hands, a big sledgehammer. And then come down from overhead and hit it as hard as you can and see if it doesn't knock your head off. <laughs> thank you, well, thanks again. It's good hearing you. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you for calling. 520-333-4578 is the number. <laughs> good evening. You're on the air. Hey, Bill. This is John and Irene from Texas. Hi, Hi. John. How are you? Hi, Irene. Hey. Yeah, Irene sends her love. Where is she? Is she listening? Is she listening? Uh, probably she's in the other room. She can't hear the short wave very well. But you're uh, pegging the mid you're pegging the needle here in Texas. Well, you give Irene a big hug and you tell her that I love her. We all love her. I will. And we miss her. And we miss you. I was hoping that uh, I was hoping to hear you back on. I'm glad that you're uh, you're back on on a strong signal now, and uh, uh, that y'all are doing all right there. Well, thank you, John. Poot, you remember John and Irene? Yeah. You want to say hello? Come and say hello. Hi, Pooh. How are you guys doing? Well, say hi. That's good. Say hi. Hi. You taking care of Allison? <laughs> yeah. That's better. You better. This is Allison. Say hi, John. Hi, John. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I remember you when you were just just starting to walk. Yeah. That's yeah. when they. That's when things really got interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's running. No, no, she is running. Yeah. Okay, John, thank you for calling. You bet. Thanks, John. Take care. Bye-bye. 520-333-4578 is the number. The number. Number, number, number. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, as soon as the show is over. Good evening. You're on the air. Bill, it's the first time I heard you. I got a shortwave radio. Yeah. Uh, that's a good radio. Yeah, it's a great radio. I love it. And it's the first time I ever heard you on the air, and you really sound great. And I wanted to say something about Art Bell. Sure. First of all, he's in business to make money, just like everybody else. I'm not sticking up for him. I've heard a lot of good and bad in him. It's okay to stick up for him. We're not, yeah, against, we're no, not against you sticking like, up you know, for him. He's, he's only trying to look at both sides of the coin, but it's hard to figure out what he's really up to. Now, I heard him interview, you know, Father Melkheimer from the Vatican, uh, King Zahi Hawass from Egypt. I mean, he does have a lot of listeners, and there are some interesting topics of discussion he has, but he throws in the fruitcakes, and it gets me upset, and i got to shut it off. Well, Matter of fact, I call him a few times. We laugh about a lot of stuff. I'm disabled. I want to get out of New York State. And um, I don't know. I've enjoyed him because I've had a sleep disorder for five years. 
Uh, there's a lot of people who got that in New York City, you know. But anyways, I'm enjoying your <laughs> program. Um, I'm going to be listening to 7.415 more often during the evening out here in Buffalo. Well, good. Not just to this show. There's some other great programs on here. I listen to R&I. What is it? R&I, &I, Radio New York International, uh -huh. on Sunday nights. I'll have to look that one up. Oh, you'll enjoy it. Johnny Lightning and the, and the crew. It's just a fun show. You know, it's not it's not serious like some of the stuff that we do. Um, unless unless Johnny gets on a on a horse and starts to ride it. I also studied mm -hmm. prophecy all my life. Um, all the things that people swept in the corner, I really studied the most in my life. So, um, you know, it, mo most times in life you'll find out that people don't want to know the truth. They really don't want to know. And well, I can tell you that's an absolute fact. They don't want to know the truth. It disturbs their life. It makes them makes them responsible, and they don't want to be responsible. And the people that don't want to know the truth, they're not real people. They're plastic people. They don't stand for authenticity in America. Well, they don't stand for anything. We need guys like you that are going <laughs> to get out on the radio and tell it like it is. Well, I've, I've been doing it for years, and I'm not going to stop. Until I, I, I really appreciate your program. I'll be listening to you more. Well, thank you. Thank you. And thank you for calling. Take care. Whatever is ailing you, I hope it gets better. 520-333-4578. Good evening. You're on the air. Yes, good evening, Mr. Cooper. This is Joseph Cudwell in Columbus, Georgia. Well, hello, Joseph. Hello. I'm concerned about New York City and the future for October this year. Many of my friends are concerned that there may be a major terrorist event around the Wall Street or the United Nations District that may be on a grand scale. Are you concerned about this? Uh, I don't know what you mean by concern. I've been concerned about people hurting other people for many years. Uh, I'm concerned about freedom. I'm concerned about a lot of things. There's going to be terrorist attacks in this country until they succeed in disarming the whole world, and then they'll stop. Very good. Thank you for your advice. You're welcome. That's what it's all about, folks. It's to create terror so that the people scream out to disarm everybody so that we can all be enslaved. Mm -hmm. And if you track down who's mm -hmm. funding and supplying all these terrorists, you'll find out who the real terrorists are. And most of them live in London and Washington, D.C. and in the state of Israel. Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, this is uh, Jim here in Virginia. Yes? When did you hear me mention that? Um, I guess a few callers back, somebody had uh, mentioned this. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Book Behold. Written that was in Book a Million or something? Behold a Pale Horse. What's it called again? Behold a Pale Horse. Behold a Pale Horse. Yep. Well, thank you very much. Like I said, I have never heard short wave before, but uh, your show is quite interesting. I like to. Uh, to have people like you on. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. But remember, don't don't just believe what you hear me say. I, you know, my admonition is you better check it out. Not just what I say, but what everybody says. That's the only way you're going to know what's the truth and what's not. And if you find me make a mistake, please let me know and prove it to me so that I can correct it. I, I really would appreciate that. 520-333-4578. Good evening. You're on the air. Yes, absolutely. Is that uh, how far down the road you see that coming down the pike? Prognosticating. Well, I don't know if they're ever going to release it to the public or not. Um, who knows what they're going to do? Well, that 450 there? pages of Star's report that they released is not all of it. There was uh, another uh, 50 or so pages that they kept secret. There's also 2,800 pages of evidence that has nothing to do with Monica Lewinsky uh, that they have not made public. Starr has said that he that he has not finished with the Whitewater investigation and uh, a lot of other things that he has that he hasn't even submitted a report to the Congress for. What was the exact uh, phrasing of that? Uh, of what? Of the Veritas uh, when you had uh, made a quote regarding that prediction. Um, it wasn't a prediction. It, 
that wasn't a prediction. That was a report that our sources in Washington, D.C. informed us that Starr was in possession of evidence that there had been drug use in the White House. That was a report, not a prediction. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> it was a news report. Yeah. I wonder what you kept saying, prediction. I was scratching my head trying to say, what's he talking about? Prognostication or whatever it might be, but it's uh, just usually you're, you're right on with uh, such things. I am right on with it. You better bet your boots I'm right on with it. And that's one of the reasons why Clinton would never release any information regarding his medical records or his past illnesses, because he has a chronic... Cocaine habit. Uh, just one other thing. Uh, now, now, if, now, if he was a normal guy walking around working in California, I wouldn't care. I don't care. But this guy has a finger that can push buttons that can cause millions of people to die. It's not the truth. Um, also, it, researching um, executive orders, where do these people pull these numbers out of hats and how the heck did they get them? How, when, where do who pull numbers out of hats? You talk, you're talking about the government or, or what? I mean, uh, like you tune into like a, like a Bob Grant or even a Rush Limbaugh right now and then report some executive order number and it's reading copy. And uh, Where do these people get this kind of thing? You can get it too. Anything that's published by the government, if it's not classified uh, as, as under the National Security Act, you can get it too. I know, but well, how do you know what to ask for? You ask for the executive order number, whatever the number is. Uh, how do you know what number represents? You just said you heard him read it on the air. Well, I, my point is, uh, how does someone like him come to know what the number represents? Same way I do. When they write an executive order, they publish it. And I get it. Where is it published? It's published in the Federal Register. It's published uh, sometimes in the Congressional Record when it's submitted to Congress for approval. It's uh, published by the White House. In fact, if you're online, you can go directly to the White House and get it right off the Internet. You can go to the uh, any federal depository library and get every executive order that's ever been written that's not classified. And uh, you can get it from the United States government printing office. What country do you live in? I mean, how come you don't know these things that every citizen is supposed to know? Now, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm really interested. How do people get lost like that? Oh, okay. Well, I understand that. Yeah, that's quite unfortunate. Maybe yeah. you could do a, uh, a show on just good, hardcore research, how to go about it. Well, we've done that in the past. Maybe we should do that again. Yeah, just a step-by-step, -step, uh, method just a real methodical approach, and maybe even how to uh, weed the uh, nonsense out. <laughs> no, that's a little more difficult. I know it is. You need to have a background in research and, and, uh, and digging this stuff out before, you know, that... 90% of it is absolute crap. It's yeah. a lie. It's fake. It's false. It's, it just keeps people turning around in circles, chasing their own tail. Well, how about you get me started? What's the scariest executive order you could have me look up? Uh, I can't come up with anything. Uh, look at the FEMA. Anything concerning FEMA. That'll scare you. If that doesn't scare you, nothing will. we got to go. We're out of time. Okay. I love the show. Thanks for All calling. Right. Well, folks, we got to go. Girls, you want to come say goodnight? Uh-oh, the little one's asleep. <laughs> say goodnight. 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 Goodnight, folks. And Allison, in her dreams, I'm sure, is saying goodnight also. And God bless each and every single one of you. Without exception. been listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper, the man William Jefferson Clinton named in a White House memo 
as the most dangerous radio host in America. And if you listen to this broadcast every night, you'll find out why. The truth is the most dangerous weapon you can wield against the lie. It will bring down treason.